everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, we have a couple of presenters on. Uh, Tom Ferris from Alliance Corporation is going to do a brief introduction to Alliance and to our uh, topic and our presenter. And we have uh, Roman Krawczyk from Teeny Fiber. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, Roman, sorry. Um, and Steve Stark from Teeny Fiber. They're going to do the presentation and explain all about the uh, micro-armored fiber to us. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, during the presentation, everyone will be muted, except for the presenters. So if you have a question you'd like to uh, get answered, you can submit it through the GoToWebinar Questions Console. And we will usually take the questions at the end of the presentation. So um, uh, the other thing to note is that I am recording this webinar. So if you want to watch it later, if you have to drop out, if you have a colleague you want to share it with, I'm recording it, so as soon as I can get it out to everybody, I will send you a link to a YouTube video where you can watch it as many times as you like. So um, with that said, I'm going to hand things over to Tom. Thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, before we get started, I want to get something straight with everybody here. Roman, I have a question for you. Is it teeny okay. or is it tiny? It's teeny. <laughs> it's teeny. Teeny fiber. Okay. All right. I got kind of like that out more, of the way. Like Martini. It's the Martini of fiber. I like fiber. Martini. That's correct. Okay, wonderful. All right. So everybody on the call, this is Teeny Fiber. And what we're going to talk a bit today is, is about micro-armored fiber. My name is Tom Ferris. I'm with Alliance Communications. We are a value-added distributor in the Americas and in Mexico. Um, I, I, I recognize some of the names on the uh, call today, so I think some of you have been with us before. But for the new folks out there, uh, we are a uh, we are a value added distributor in the Americas. We focus primarily on wireless and also wireline telecommunications products for the cellular industry and also for the structured cable industry. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Roman. Uh, it's been over two two and a half years now at a trade show a couple years back, and I saw this really unique product. And I I, I just you know like I I just like went crazy uh, the minute I saw it. Brought it back to my product manager, my fiber product manager. He loved it. And all of a sudden, we started building some of our custom jumpers with this product uh, right off the bat. And we've been uh, specifying this fiber um, in a lot of different projects across the United States. We've been bringing it to Bixie shows all across the regions. And we've been getting some great, um, some, some great feedback on it. Um, so what I'm going to do there, I'm going to give you a little bit about Alliance. And then we're going to get right into uh, 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 teeny fiber and Steve and Roman. So, um, so what's exciting about today's presentation? We did this presentation, I think, about four or five months ago, and the excitement is still there. I mean, this is one innovative piece of fiber optic cable. Um, it's a corning piece of fiber optic cable, just like most of the other uh, uh, fiber that you guys are pulling out there. But these guys have figured out a way to uh, put it in a jacket that. It's incredibly flexible, uh, does so many other things for you on installations. I think you're going to love this kind of stuff. Um, it's very strong, it's flexible, and it fits where others don't. And, you know, I'm from the New York City market. I'm sure there's a couple of New Yorkers on the call here, but I'm, your conduits are jammed in a lot of these big buildings that we have here in New York City. And when you're pulling fiber through these conduits, it's almost like going through a meat grinder. Um, this type of fiber comes in really handy in those types of situations. And we've been using this a lot on outdoor installations. I mean, if you run fiber on towers these days, you know, if, if a piece of a piece of ice falls off a tower in the middle of the winter and hits anything on that tower, it's gonna it's gonna break it. So fibers and coax and other cables are very vulnerable on towers. So this tower, this cable comes in real handy on the outdoor side of our business as well. So really excited about this. I don't want to steal any thunder from my friends at Teeny Fiber. So uh, let me just tell you a little bit about Alliance. So as I said earlier, we're a value-added distributor. Uh, we have products in a variety of different areas, from wireless products to fiber to infrastructure products, which is all of the steel and civil equipment that goes into rooftop and cell tower installation. We also have a variety of IDAS and ODAS products, distributed antenna systems, cellular products. And You'll see how tiny fiber fits into that as well. Teeny fiber fits into that, excuse me. And on the, on the supply chain side of our business, we do a lot of supply chain services for the cellular carriers in the Americas, whereby we provide logistics centers scattered across uh, North America, and we provide in and outbound logistics 
for their construction projects in their major markets. Uh, just a couple of other things here. We, we have direct relationships with several hundred different vendors. And I'll show you some names of those in a, in a few seconds. And you'll see these are some of the top folks in the industry, including Teeny Fiber. We have extensive inventories in all of our facilities. And we try to provide personalized expert assistance. All of the people here who work at Alliance have been in this industry uh, for minimally 10 years. Um, personally here, I've been selling wireless probably since the mid-'80s. I have other people in this business who have doing it just as long as me. So when you call in here, you're going to get a qualified person on the phone who's going to be able to answer all of your questions. We also have some overlap in our product lines as well. So that allows us to become more of a uh, an honest broker when it comes to recommending products to you. So we can be a little bit of a, an independent recommender uh, when you're out there trying to specify products for your customers. And we also provide pre- and post-sales technical support which includes on-site training for many of our brands. And as I said earlier, we have warehouses located throughout USA, Canada, and Latin America. On the technical services side of things, if any of you all have ever dealt with microwave before, we provide microwave path licensing services with the FCC and Industry Canada. We also provide free network design and radio path surveys and software for all of our value-added partners. We'll do product pre-configuration in our warehouses. We'll do kitting and racking and stacking. We also sell towers, and we do complete tower design. So all you need to come to us with is what you're trying to hang on this tower and where you're, where you're trying to put it, and we'll provide you all of the design support for it. And then we also provide Tier 1 and Tier 2 tactical support and RMA support for many of our vendors. So if you're working with a product and maybe you haven't worked with it uh, before and it's your first install, our folks will get on the phone with you and help you through it. On the broadband side of our business, which is what I manage here in the United States, these are all the active RF components and the active electronics. These are some of the brands we represent, and these brands encompass all different types of backhaul and transportation systems, from microwave to WiMAX to Wi-Fi. We, we provide products that do point-to-point -point as well as multi-point that operate in the licensed and unlicensed frequencies. And as I said earlier, we also provide a full complement of towers and steel products that go with implementation. And we also have an electrical uh, division in our company where we provide a variety of different AC, DC, UPSs, as well as all different types of renewable products. And if you see here, this is just a brief list of some of the major manufacturers that you, we represent. And um, if, if you know these names, you know these guys are some of the top guys in the world at what they do. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Roman and Steve in a second here, but I appreciate you coming on board. We try to do these webinars on a monthly basis. Uh, if you go up to our website, um, you'll see uh, a list of those. We have another webinar coming up shortly from a company named Cambridge Networks, which is a licensed point-to-multipoint art radio product. As Lisa said earlier, you can visit us on our YouTube channel. And we have Facebook, LinkedIn pages, and we also do a little tweeting here as well. So if you use any of these social media platforms, please come up. Uh, follow us, and we'll follow you, and uh, and we look forward to working with you all in the future. Thanks very much, Roman and Steve. It's all yours. Tom, thank you very much for your uh, introduction and uh, the uh, opportunity for all of us to learn a little bit more about your offerings. Uh, basically, everyone, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Roman Krozik. I am an electrical engineer out of Stevens from back in the 80s. And um, I've been in this industry pretty much ever since uh, I got out of school. Uh, my first job was for Novell, which is a software company uh, doing local area networking and wide area networking back before Microsoft. And uh, I did my first fiber pull in 1989. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with fiber optics and the actual physical infrastructure and uh, technology that goes into uh, Im implementing it in the proper way. Uh, that being said, I've had several uh, companies that I've, I've owned and, and worked with. Uh, the Teeny Fiber story basically comes from my experience in installations. Uh, fiber optics has been um, more and more of a popular and, uh, and high demand cable to be installed and protection and keeping the fiber optic cables safe uh, is a paramount issue. And um, armored fiber is becoming more and more prevalent, basically because it's so important to have uptime. You, you can't have downtime when you have a fiber optic install. 
So uh, armored fiber has been uh, very popular. Up until recently, the only way to armor your fiber has been the traditional BX aluminum interlock type armor. Uh, very big, very bulky, very cumbersome, very difficult to install. And uh, doing a lot of projects also in the New York City area, I was just thinking of a way, how do we do this better? How do we protect fiber better? How, how, why do we have to deal with, you know, one inch and, you know, inch and a quarter ODs and giant core holes that we have to, that we have to uh, uh, put into these buildings? Um, and upon, like, traveling around and, and looking at different things and working with my partners, uh, we kind of developed this uh, method of wrapping the glass with a stainless steel armor. Uh, very small, very flexible, very high strength. Um, we've developed this about three and a half years ago, and we've been playing with this idea for a while, and then we also took it to the patent office, and for the last three years, we've been pushing through uh, the patent process, uh, which we finally achieved last November, and that's why we are fully coming to market and uh, working with uh, Alliance as uh, one of our major distributors uh, throughout the Americas. And we're very happy to be uh, partnered with them and uh, are very pleased that they are uh, embracing our product. So that's just Excuse a little me, background Roman? story. Yes, sir. Have you put up your presentation yet? I don't see it. I'm just checking. It's up. Oh, it is. Okay. You have you it? Take control of, uh, of the PowerPoint. I'm okay. just going to change things. There you go. Yeah, I didn't think it was up. There you go. You got, now you're all set. You got it now? Sorry. Okay. Yep, you're all set. Go ahead. Okay, good. Sorry about that. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the basic first slide. And, um, you know, basically what I'm going to, you know, go over is uh, some of the applications that we're um, implementing this into. Uh, you know, basically what's exciting about this uh, today's presentation is it's a new product. It's something new. It's uh, the fiber optic industry, you know, has better glass and corning is always coming out with something you know newer and faster but this is different we're not changing the technology of the glass we're changing the technology of protecting the glass and delivering it to the client in a, in a, in a better more effective economical way so um, our stainless steel um, armor is stronger than copper uh, than an aluminum armor that's uh, that's out there in the industry and um, this this slide just tells you basically a little bit about you know, what we're going to be speaking about in, in the next, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, our focus today has really been about the DAS uh, application of fiber optics. Um, as I'm under the impression that, you know, most of us on this call are familiar with DAS, so we're not going to get into the, the minutia of, you know, how DAS operates. You know, it's basically cell phone usage uh, where end users want to use their cell phones within buildings or in environments that current antenna systems can't handle. Uh, so, so DAS is basically a, a network of antennas installed throughout a facility, throughout a building, so that so I got a little feedback here, so that um, uh, cell phone users can have um, use in, uh, of their phones um, within buildings, within um, you know various uh, applications and and locations. Um, um, there are various types of DAS system, systems. Some are carrier owned and some are neutral host. Like a carrier owned system is basically AT&T goes into a building and runs their own fiber optic cables and has their own service for their own cell phones. Verizon goes in and r runs their systems side by side right next to AT&T's. Two independent fiber optic systems yeah. within the same building or the same venue. Uh, in New York City, that's very common because the buildings are independently owned and these carriers have to come in and lease the space and the building owners want to lease the space to as many people as possible. Uh, a neutral host system is when a building takes controls of the fiber optic system and is able to lease strands of a system for AT&T, for Verizon, or Sprint, or whoever wants to be within that facility. Uh, so there's two different ways of basically hosting a system within a within a building or a facility that really depends on the on the building uh, management type of company um, as an example as a specific example of a DAS system in New York City we recently were involved in a project where 
AT&T was coming into a, a large 40-story building in New York City that required a DAS system for the AT&T cell phones to work. And in order to implement the AT&T system, four four-inch core holes were required in all the closets on all four, 40 stories of the building. And um, it's a tremendous expense. When we introduced our armored fiber optic cable into the, into the scenario, floors needed either two or one four-inch core hole in all the floors, saving them about, about 56 core holes within the building, which is a tremendous savings. The savings in the uh, labor of core holing alone paid for the fiber optic cable. So the, the, the savings is in the installation, the application of this product line. Um, and you know, continuing about uh, DAS, it's uh, it's a tremendously growing uh, market. Uh, not only is it uh, important in within buildings uh, because you know users can't penetrate walls to get out to the antennas. It's also uh, very prevalent in uh, sports arenas, uh, concerts, uh, things of that nature. If you're um, at a concert, for example, or or a sports venue. There could be 70,000 people that want to use their cell phone at the same time. What kind of system can supply, supply that bandwidth? It's almost you know, um, unbelievable the, uh, the amount of uh, usage that people want to do. They want to take pictures. They want to send them. And it's all got to go through a DAS system. And these DAS systems are all powered by fiber optics because fiber is the only medium that will allow this massive amount of bandwidth to uh, exist at the same time. Um, another huge application for, for DAS is uh, uh, public safety, police, fire department, emergency systems, um, tunnels. They all require cell phone usage to be available within these different facilities like tunnels and uh, you know, subway systems. So uh, metropolitan type areas are very involved in DAS projects. This way they can feed uh, sim uh, cell phone signals to all the users and also emergency responders uh, wherever they may be, you know, whether they're underground or in tunnels or within buildings. So there's so many applications for the DAS systems that um, it's, it's just an ever-growing um, phenomenon, really. Um, fiber optics has become the predominant communications medium because of the bandwidth. It's huge for the bandwidth, not only for DAS, other applications like cable television. All you know, Verizon FiOS. I'm sure many of us know about FiOS and the Pond's concept of FiOS. Uh, huge, 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 growing market for uh, broadband TV and broadband applications and and broadband transmission, point to multi-point type applications. Um, obviously, computer networks, security surveillance. Huge, huge, especially now with the new 4K applications and the cameras that are so high res. They need a lot of bandwidth to be able to transmit those signals on a real-time basis. Fiber is the only medium that's going to allow that on a consistent, uh, full-scale basis. So security is a really huge application for, for all of this stuff. Uh, industrial co in controls, you know, building management systems, for example, all the BMS stuff. Uh, a lot of the new systems are designed with fiber optics uh, to control all the different uh, components of a BMS system, you know, traffic systems, utility grids, you know, just about you know, any application uh, is requiring fiber due to the amount of bandwidth. Uh, wireless antennas, obviously, for DAS and, and any other uh, transmission applications are, are uh, key uh, to be connected by fiber to maintain the bandwidth uh, availability. Um, example of a DAS project, like I just mentioned, stadium. 70,000 people, most are on their cell phone, whether they're watching the game or talking to a friend or taking pictures and putting them on Facebook. The bandwidth, it's got to be tremendous to support that type of uh, demand. Uh, that's a giant demand for a small time basis. Um, so those types of applications are huge and we've been involved in helping design a few of those types of systems. Um, DAS over fiber is basically uh, covers a little bit uh, about how fiber is how this fiber is implemented. Basically, this type of fiber is like any other fiber. So, if uh, your technicians and, and fiber installers are familiar with fiber optic cables, uh, they'll be able to use uh, this type of fiber. It's the same type of glass. Um, it's a, it's available in um, you know all the current 
cable types and uh, you know uh, single mode, multi mode, and and uh, things of that nature. Uh, field termination can be either uh, mechanical terminated, like Unicam connectors, or uh, fusion spliced, whether a single strand or ribbon. Uh, a lot of different ways of field terminating it. Basically, we did not change uh, the technology of the glass within the fiber. We just changed the way of protecting it and deploying it. Um, prefab assemblies are also available to make installs go easier. So with, uh, with Alliance, we can uh, terminate you know, 150 foot uh, strands and uh, basically the installer can just go in, take off a pulling eye and plug everything in so to, to make the uh, install go in even easier. So field termination is definitely uh, something that's available and um, you know, encouraged either field or, or in, a, in a lab. Now we're thinking our teeny fiber is a little bit unique because basically it's the same size of a conventional armor. It's not the size of a giant aluminum interlock fiber. Uh, so you're not sacrificing anything for armoring it and protecting it. Uh, but not only is it the same st size, the stainless steel uh, gives it really good tensile strength for pulling and uh, crush resistance is tremendous uh, because it's steel as opposed to aluminum. Uh, bend radius is excellent so you can get around tight corners and through small bends and pipes and conduits or wherever you got to go. And um, it's just tremendous um, innovation in, in um, how to install this type of uh, cable and have it armored. It's dramatically smaller and easier to install than aluminum interlock. And if any of uh, you have installed aluminum interlock, you know when you're pulling that cable through other cables, it heats up and has the uh, tendency to, to burn up and eat up some of the existing cables that may be within a tray or a conduit or a pipe. Our cable does nothing like that. It's smooth jacket, smooth walled. It goes in nice and easy, almost like a Cat5 cable, you know. But and it's actually stronger than that. So we feel that our fiber optic cable is um, very innovative because it can be the same size of a non-armored cable, yet serve the function of an armored cable and, and actually exceed a lot of its characteristics. <clears throat> in terms of uh, this slide, the application besides DAS is infinite. Uh, one of the huge applications for us and for Alliance is security applications. Uh, security cameras with 4K feeds uh, require tremendous bandwidth, like I mentioned before, so fiber is key. Uh, we've developed a composite cable that has fiber and copper power conductors under one jacket. So basically, if you notice, you have a armored um, fiber optic cable here. This is a two strand, but we can make it six strand, four strand, 12 strand, you know, we can customize this to whatever application you may need. And it also includes some uh, copper conductors. This is a, our common is an 18.2, which is a, our version of a Siamese camera cable. RG59 with 18.2, well, this is single mode two strand with an 18.2, uh, which will power up just about, you know, any basic camera, antenna, access point, anything that, you know, that may need power and fiber to go to one location. This might alleviate the, uh, the need for running pipe, running additional cables, having additional power supplies. Uh, and again, the gauge can be configured to whatever you, you need. If it's 16 gauge or 12 gauge, or you need three conductors or six. We, you know, basically, this is built to order and um, built to whatever specifications the application may require. Typically, 18.2 with two strand is our staple. That's what we stock. And uh, we do uh, move quite a quite a volume of that for various applications. Um, again, just a quick reason of why copper. I mean, why fiber versus copper? Fiber optic applications use less power. Uh, if you look at a Pons or a G Pons application, the amount of power required to 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 um, power a system is infinitely less than a regular switch-based copper system. Uh, so the power uh, consumption is really a big uh, issue when you come into uh, uh, using fiber optics. Uh, bandwidth, infinite bandwidth when it comes to single mode. The, a properly designed single mode network has tremendous bandwidth and can handle amazing amounts of data instantaneously. So copper is nowhere near the amount of bandwidth that fiber can uh, achieve. Speed and distance, 320 
eight feet Ethernet distance um, limitation, fiber can go for miles and miles and miles. And uh, it can go between cities and depending on your application, uh, it's the distance is, it becomes a, a, a not an issue if you have the appropriate hardware to, to go so. So there's no need for a closet every 300 feet within a building or within a facility. Uh, you can shoot fiber thousands of feet and avoid having uh, re repeaters and um, switches where they're not really needed. <clears throat> Security issue, uh, data traveling over fiber has been proven to be safer and harder to tap than data traveling over copper. Uh, so the security aspect of traveling uh, your data over fiber as opposed to copper uh, is, a, is a great advantage. Uh, centralized networks, of course, you, can, you don't need as many closets. You can put them all in one location. Um, reliability, extremely reliable, especially when you take the armor into consideration. Um, you know, fiber is lightweight, it's thin, it's, you know, relatively easy to install. Um, it's, you can migrate to various speeds if, you know, if you go to uh, gigabit networks uh, and run single mode, um, it's very up, upgradable and your network can run on fiber for years and years uh, and as long as you have the hardware that's uh, compatible. Uh, field termination, field splicing, it's, it's not that difficult to fix or repair or anything that needs to go, you know, happen on site. And in terms of cost, um, it basically, the installation's savings are tremendous and also um, the maintenance uh, of uh, fiber optic networks is, is quite uh, relatively inexpensive as opposed to massive uh, copper networks. Um, now we're going to get into a couple of the different constructions of our specific Teeny fiber. Um, the first one we're looking at the um, it's, it's like an OM3, OM4 cable. Uh, this for an example is a 12 strand cable and on our 12 strand construction typically comes with a 250 micron size buffer which is like considered loose tube. Uh, very easy to fusion splice on, very easy to ribbonize. If you're going to be using unicams on it, you got to put a, a breakout kit which is available through Alliance uh, in uh, 6, uh, 12, 24, and 36 strand uh, uh, varieties. Pretty easy to, uh, to terminate. As you can see there's glass, there's Kevlar, there's a secondary jacket, there's a steel tube that protects it. We put another layer of Kevlar. We have a metal braid which adds to the tensile strength when you're pulling on it and another layer of Kevlar. This is one of our staple cables that is extremely popular. The small size is the size of a Cat5 cable. The strength, as you can see with all the components, is tremendous. And uh, you're getting 12 strands of fiber. And it's, it's basically a 5 millimeter uh, OD. So it's, uh, it's really small. Uh, some people, oops, I skipped ahead a little bit. Some people prefer to work with a type buffer type cable, which is a 900 micron. Basically, it's just easier to unicam onto it. If you're going to be splicing, you still have to get down to the buffer underneath. Uh, this is for shorter runs, smaller installs. Uh, the size of the jacket on the six strand, this is a six strand, like, for example, is about the same as a 12 strand, 250 micron. A uh, little less protection in terms of uh, armoring and, and, uh, and braid, but the 900 micron buffered cable itself is a little bit more beefy than the 250, so it doesn't really need as much uh, protection as this one does. Uh, and the other option is ribbon cable. Uh, we do ribbon anywhere from 12 strands up to 144 strands. The 144 is like a 12 millimeter OD. It's still really small compared to the other armored solutions. So as you can see, there are a variety of ways that this construction can be made. And uh, just for your knowledge, all of the glass that we use within here is Corning glass. So we didn't change the technology on what we're using in terms of the medium. We just changed the technology of how we're protecting it and are able to deliver it to the client. Uh, uh, outside applications, uh, as uh, Tom mentioned before, uh, we offer the Teeny Fiber in a PU jacket, polyurethane, which is a very high flex jacket. This is perfect for deployable reels, for areas where you want to roll the cable out, maybe you want to roll it back in, very high flex. So it, the bend radius is extremely tight on this. Uh, you can get it into really tight spaces that's got a lot of turns. Uh, it's, a, it's an indoor outdoor rated jacket. 
Uh, it's not a plenum rated jacket. It's not a direct burial rated jacket, but it's excellent for many applications, uh, especially in broadcast. Uh, we've seen a lot of broadcast companies uh, really take to it, and we, we do it in all the strand counts as well. Uh, the second outdoor jacket that's very, very popular for us is a polyethylene jacket. Uh, that's basically a direct burial rated jacket. Uh, it's a little bit stiffer. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, it can be buried. All of our outdoor cables, all of them feature water block tape. Uh, we can do gel on a special order basis, but in, in general we use a water black yarn, uh, which makes the cable able to be used indoors and outdoors, and you don't have to worry about the 50-foot distance limitation when you're using gels uh, within a building. Uh, another very popular jacket type for outdoor applications is our indoor-outdoor plenum uh, type of jacket. It's basically plenum rated, uh, yet still UV uh, for uh, sunlight resistance, and uh, has the water block tape, uh, and the jacket's a little bit thicker than, than regular jackets. Uh, we do, you know, don't recommend it to be exposed to the elements, and we don't rate it to be directly buried but it's perfect for indoor use and outdoor use in conduit. So if you have two buildings or a tower, you want to connect to a building and you have a pipe in between, this is the, your best option, especially if you're going to go within the building uh, some distance after the fact. So the indoor-outdoor plenum is a very popular one for us. Um, here's a slide that just introduces of like who's using the product, you know, what it's about, and uh, you know, where to use micro-armored fiber. Uh, we kind of covered a lot of these topics already, so I'm not going to get too repetitive, but basically it's a patented technology uh, that we hold the patent, and uh, it's stainless steel wrapped around the, uh, the glass. It's basically the strongest solution uh, out there in the market at this point. Um, it's available in a variety of strand counts. I mentioned the 6 and the 12, but we manufacture teeny fiber anywhere from one strand, which is a very popular fiber to the home application, uh, up to 144 strand ribbon, which is you know an application for trunk runs and um, you know variety of uh, applications. Uh, of course, OM1, OM3, and OM4, and OS2 are the prevalent types. With OM3 and OS2 being the the, the most prevalent, uh, we see OM4 up and coming tremendously. And uh, OS2 as well is, uh, is, is, is tremendous, especially in the applications that we're talking about, like DAS and PONS and security and things like that. Um, in terms of jacketing, which I touched on a little bit before, it is available in riser, plenum, indoor-outdoor, low smoke, zero halogen for a lot of uh, uh, metropolitan and transit type applications, um, direct burial, industrial, harsh envir environments. So basically, um, any type of application and jacket is available. So, sorry about that noise. We've got a helicopter flying by here. Um, OK, so this, this next uh, slide also just recaps a little bit about the different applications, whether it's telco or CATV, IT, security, broadband. It's basically a great great way to protect your fiber optic investment. It's uh, smaller and lighter than the interlock cable and uh, with the, with the uh, composite cable with the hybrid with the power, it really uh, allows you to custom tailor a solution that will really meet the needs of your client application. Um, and again, uh, broadcast, communication, security, fiber to the home, ponds, G ponds, you know, there's a there's a plethora of applications, and as fiber becomes the mainstream in um, in the world for for medium, that's you know th those are some of the uh, applications that you'll be uh, you'll be looking at. Uh, some of this we already covered a little bit. Um, we use obviously Kevlar, and uh, you know we have the smallest OD for armored fiber, a variety of different uh, strand counts, uh, and really the savings is in the installation. Uh, the amount of man hours and uh, installation time that you can save installing our armored fiber as opposed to regular interlock armor is uh, is tremendous. Uh, along with Alliance, we also uh, provide a patch cord type solution, so you can even get your patch cords armored. Very small, same size, even smaller than conventional patch cords, uh, but they'll be armored. So you know, if uh, if it's a fiber to the desktop application. 
you can run an armored patch cord from uh, the wall to your PC and not worry about someone stepping on it or kicking it, uh, that it's so delicate because uh, it's, it's, they're quite, um, quite firm and, and quite strong on the armored applications. So that's, that's pre-termination and fiber uh, uh, patch cords are a very big application for us. As Tom mentioned, they started building cords uh, with this cable immediately. Uh, we've had some media exposure uh, last two years in a row. We've won awards uh, at the ISC show, uh, the security show in Las Vegas. Uh, we won the Govies Award. Uh, one was for the armored fiber with the power, and another one was with the trunk uh, configuration. Uh, we do offer a 25-year warranty uh, for um, installers that are certified to install the cable properly. So we are competitive with uh, other uh, famous brand manufacturers in ordering in uh, offering a warranty that will uh, be able to uh, make the customer feel secure and uh, confident of their uh, investment. Um, Microarmor versus interlock armor, which we touched on. This slide really says a lot. Uh, our fiber, 12 strand, interlock armor. You can just see the size difference. You know, same thing with uh, with uh, OM3 here. Uh, these are our big movers. The, the size difference is tremendous. The installation of this cable is very difficult. Um, life just gets in a lot easier. Once the contractors put in this cable once or twice, they, they really never want to run this again uh, because of all the problems and, and things that have to do with it. Uh, here's like a fun slide that has 300 feet of interlock armor, a six strand, and 300 feet of our teeny fiber. So transport that to a job site in an elevator and uh, to a truck where this a technician just can carry in. Uh, so the advantages of the smaller armor being stronger than the bigger armor, yet so smaller, are tremendous, tremendous. This slide really shows the picture of what we're really talking about. Um, in terms of a 1,000-foot reel, a 12-strand count reel of teeny fiber weighs about 100 pounds, a 12-strand count reel of interlock armor fiber wears about 400 pounds. Where we're at 5.5 millimeters diameter, this is almost 14 uh, millimeters in diameter. Uh, bend radius, ours is double the diameter. So not only are we smaller, we can wrap it tighter because our diameter is smaller. So the advantages of our armoring over the traditional armoring is, uh, is tremendous. Um, this is just a little rundown. I'm not going to go over the details, but of how much a uh, installation can save when you're using our micro-armored fiber as opposed to an interlock farm, uh, fiber in terms of you know, shipping and man hours and labor. We, we kind of uh, came up with numbers that you can save almost half, half the amount of uh, money in, uh, in the installation of, uh, of our product as opposed to the traditional interlock product. Um, we have a lot of marketing information. There are links to YouTube videos which I'm not going to be clicking on, but uh, feel free to at some point uh, check out some of our, our videos. Some of them are fun and, uh, and you know, pretty educational in terms of how to handle and uh, process and work with our fiber optic cable. Uh, our spec sheets are pretty concise. Here's a spec sheet for the fiber plus power. It shows a graphic, shows a description, shows all of the details here on uh, the crush resistance, the tensile strength, the size, uh, the ratings, the temperature uh, operations, and which glass we use, Corning Clear Curve uh, 652D. We also do a lot of 657.82. Uh, that can, you know, that can be decided on, uh, you know, at any given time. Uh, here's a spec sheet for a single mode fiber, four strand, very popular. Uh, you know, just wanted to show you the, the spec sheets of how the specs are provided. So when you're submitting your submittals to the client, you have nice professional looking spec sheets giving you all the information and everything that, that they need to know uh, to make sure that their cable is uh, the appropriate cable. Uh, so these are just a sampling of our spec sheets and, uh, and, and how we come about to doing this. Um, uh, you can also, uh, MTP, MPO assemblies is another application. Those are connectors that have 12 or now 24 and soon to be 36 strands in a small connector the size of an RJ45. Perfect application for our 12 strand fiber. We have a 12 strand fiber that we offer that's armored in a small three millimeter OD jacket, uh, making MPO cables and MTP cables very thin, very small, very strong. 
perfect for data center applications or runs between closets where you can just plug in a cassette and uh, break out into uh, 24 strands or 12 strands or whatever you need to break out to. Uh, so MPO applications are, are huge uh, for us. Uh, deployable reels, our tactical flavor of uh, fiber, very, very helpful with deployable reels. They really have no memory. Once you, you lay them out, you pull them back in, there's, they don't kink, they don't, they don't budge. Other applications that we're working with is, for example, HDMI over armored fiber. Uh, we have HDMI converters that we're uh, offering uh, that can send uh, the, the fiber optic distance uh, up to 1,000 feet over an HDMI of 4K signal. So there's a variety of applications and uh, innovations that we're constantly working with. And uh, here's an example of uh, some of the details of what the uh, HDMI over fiber uh, application entails. And these adapters allow for your fiber cables to be customized to any length you may need. So if you need 380 feet, it could be done at 380 feet. You know, if you need 500 feet or, you know, 400, whatever. You know, the, the applications are infinite uh, for HDMI over fiber. Uh, it can come on a reel like this and uh, easily uh, applied and deployed. Uh, we have a variety of accessories. We have a, a series of stainless steel adapters, uh, so you can load up your panels with stainless steel adapters. Just making the whole installation seem a little bit more beefy and more strength uh, applied to it, a little bit more durable uh, and ruggedized, as opposed to using the, the cheap blue plastic adapters that uh, everybody's using. Uh, we have some tools for crimping and stripping. Uh, we have videos online that you can go on uh, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn from, uh, from our websites and uh, take a look at some of the videos on how we can implement these tools and, uh, and work with the cable uh, itself. Uh, and at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the uh, door over to Steve Stark. He's our marketing manager, and he's going to give a little bit more of a marketing angle and let everyone know what else is available and how you can help market um, Teeny Fiber to your clients. Uh, so thank you for your uh, attention, and if you have any questions, just feel free to, uh, to ask us when uh, the presentation is uh, done. Thank you, Roman. Uh, again, my name is Steve Stark, and I am the Director of Marketing for Teeny Fiber. Uh, when you have best-in-class product, you need to back it up with best-in-class marketing. And I'm responsible for the web, media, award stories, and solutions that we're going to be able to provide the installer when you bring it to the end user. Uh, what I'm going to be able to show you today are just examples of some of the things that we can offer. I also now have your email address and I'll be filtering stuff over to you guys so you can see what we can do for you with regards to media, stories, testimonials, and things that are going to help you with your story with this new technology. The easiest place to start right now is the fact that uh, Roman brought up that we have a patented technology. That means this micro armor solution is the only place that you can get it. The fact that we won back-to-back -back consecutive awards at the ISC show is really more in a testament to the product. So what I'm going to do now is kind of take you through some of the things that we can offer you, and it's just going to be a sampling that really gives you the strength to go to market and be able to confidently talk about what we're offering. This right here states, November 10th, 2015, Teeny Fiber received uh, the U.S. patent for the micro armored fiber optic. That means we are the only company in the United States that offers this type of solution. If you do see something in the marketplace that may look like it, stay away because frankly that could be somebody is copying it and that could be an infringement upon our patents. So I just want you guys to be aware of what's out there and we are the real deal. Again, everything is about stories. Um, this right here is one of the many press releases that we are offering in the marketplace. Uh, this is the one we won the actual Gubby's Award last year uh, at ISC. It is a hot product that we offer, which is obviously being able to provide power over fiber. 
And as Roman mentioned, we offer this in a number of different flavors and jackets. It has nothing to do with the jacket. It has everything to do with the armor, and that is what our value is. The next one is actually a story that just broke on fiber and gas. Uh, this right here represents what's going on in the marketplace. We know that there is tremendous growth in gas. In fact, uh, AT&T has talked about 5,000% growth over the last few years in gas, and we see that growing. So we're now being recognized as de facto and as the solution to market because of two things, size, and the solution to protect the fiber optic. Again, it's always great to have stories. This is just an example of one of the stories that uh, we received from one of our integrators talking about the ease, operation, installation, savings that it was able to apply to a, a job in New York City. Again, it's always important to be able to provide these nice little testimonials because, as I like to call it, proof and concept. So when you have best-in-market product, always have something to back it up. This right here is just a very small sampling, and I like to look at it as a, a vertical market sampling of customers that have used Teeny Fiber. And as you see, we can talk about this from buildings to stadiums to uh, telco, casinos. In fact, we just did the Panther Stadium. I was actually going to try to say if the Panthers won the Super Bowl, it was because of Teeny Fiber. That's an LOL. Anyway, uh, this is just a slight sampling of what we do uh, provide as um, samplings of customers that have used our product. Uh, Roman mentioned a little earlier about some of the uh, stuff that we did with the Super Bowl. When you talk about proof and concept, nothing can be better than having New York City as your backdrop in the wintertime to use teeny fiber. This brought to attention our crush proof and flexibility of the product. During this one week at the uh, event in the city, with hundreds of thousands of cars running over the product, trucks going over it, pedestrians going over it. We had zero downtime. And because of that, we were in 2015 as well as 2016 Super Bowl because we brought peace of mind to the uh, NFL when they knew, knew that it was impossible to have any downtime. Solutions, that's what we do. So this right here is just showing one of the many solutions. We talked about fiber to the home, fiber to the desk. This is a real project that we did with the AOL. And again, it was really about uh, transporting huge amounts of data. They needed to have zero uh, downtime. And they had the comfort and confidence that the microarmor fiber from TD Fiber would provide the right solution. Uh, another project that we did that we're very proud of uh, is one of the projects in our own backyard. We're a company out of Long Island in Farmingdale. This was in Mineola, one of the top hospitals in the area. Uh, actually used our fiber op optic network. The whole backbone was done through the uh, micro armored, uh, again, to provide reliability and confidence that the system would not go down. Always got to have stories. That's my job. So right here are just a couple of articles and some of the different types of verticals that you would see our product. Uh, everything from cabling to government video, um, uh, installation and maintenance magazine have all been running stories about teeny fiber. So again, when you think about uh, who we are, you know, perception is reality. And we know that we bring best-in-class product. Uh, the stories are starting to build out. We now have a number of media companies that do follow us. Uh, you'll find us in from everything from AB Technologies, digital signage, um, as well as Security Magazine with regards to our products and articles that you're going to find out there. 
So before I end, uh, I urge everyone to click on www.teenyfiber. You will see our website. Uh, we have a lot of great information that we provide to the installer with regards to our solutions. We have a number of stories that you can use as testimonials. Uh, we do white papers, blogs, uh, and we're going to be building this out. Uh, additionally, for you guys, I think is very important is that this is obviously our, uh, our home page. We will be doing now a number of landing pages. Right now I have one for security. And before the end of this week, you will find one for gas. So what we're going to do is start building these stories out by vertical markets that will provide you guys with the solutions that are more vertical oriented. So when you do show your end user and your, your, your potential customers who Teeny Fiber is, you can do it by the vertical market. Um, trying to think of anything else. So I think at this point, that kind of covers the story, the products. And uh, at this point, I think I guess I turn it back over to Lisa or or is that it? Sorry, <laughs> is anybody there? Sorry, I had okay. myself on mute for the presentation. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's okay. Yeah, so. thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Steve, and thanks, Roman. Okay. okay. Um, uh, just as a, if anyone doesn't have any questions, you can submit them now. I haven't seen any. Um, the only questions we've had have been if anyone is. Uh, looking for a copy of the presentation. So again, I have recorded this, and I will send out, if you send me an email, I will send you a copy of the presentation in PDF. Um, and as a reminder, uh, Steve mentioned that he's going to be sending out some things, actually, that will come from, from Alliance. So I'm going to ask Steve to send me whatever reference material he's talking about. And uh, when you get a follow-up email from us after the webinar, we'll, we'll include that material. So I don't see any questions, so um, I'm just going to end things off. I know we're getting close to the hour, so thank you everybody for attending, and uh, keep an eye out for future webinars from Alliance. Thanks for uh, presenting, Stephen Roman, and thanks, Tom. Thank you for having us.